Hello everyone and welcome to the channel as always. Now if you remember previously actually I did a 30 hour Seastar S50 uh, Nebula video. Uh, in that video we captured data for both the Cone Nebula and the I believe it was the Heart Nebula the center of that. But tonight we're going to do something a little bit more difficult. Tonight we're actually going to be focusing on galaxies instead. And as you can see, we have the C-Star S50 already opened up and ready to go. So first things first, obviously, I want to go ahead and turn on my anti-do here. I go to advanced features. Make sure I have save every frame and enhancing. Um, let's see, what else? Go to my device info. No. Yes, anti-do. Okay, make sure everything's on. Sounds on good. Storage has enough storage for the night. And we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Now, again, I'm going to do my best to get as much data as possible before the moon starts to show up. As you can see, this is only a couple nights after the uh, solar eclipse happened across the United States, the annular eclipse of 2023. Uh, the visibility is about 89%. The moon is, per uh, sorry, the sky is perfectly clear. Stars are very crisp. It's very dark outside. It's honestly perfect star star days sorry, stargazing conditions. Uh, I apologize for my inability to talk in the moment. Um, as you can see, the moon percentage is 5.7%, but it is still below the horizon, so that's not going to be an issue tonight. Uh, but first things first, obviously, we're going to go to stargazing. I'm going to go to the star atlas. And I'm going to type in N M77 to see if we can find that. Let's go there. M77. And that's the one we're actually going to be focusing on tonight. So let's go to that one go to gazing and we're actually going to center on this one and another one basically try to put it in the middle uh, as it were so we can get as much exposure time as possible on not just one but two galaxies at one time that's really my goal instead of having to waste uh, time trying to get data on two different objects we're just going to try to focus on one object that had sorry one area that has two objects in it at one time that way we can get more exposure time um, and not have to cut it off halfway in the middle of the night. Oh, my only issue that I possibly might have is the fact that uh, I apologize for the dogs in the background. Sorry, uh, is the fact that there's a large oak tree in my front yard that might block the view. Uh, but I put my sea star what where hopefully um, it won't get in the way. So let's check this out. All right, so the object is now centered. As you can see, we're gonna give it a little test to see if this actually works out. Um, because it does appear that it is possible that it might be behind some trees. So uh, let's go ahead and do our go-to one more time to make sure it's tracking correctly. All right, object is now centered. So let's go ahead and start the shooting process. Now, if it is in fact behind a branch, then we might have to come back in uh, and locate a different object. So let's go ahead and try that now. All right, so as you saw in the previous clip, a tree branch was in fact in the way. It was quite large, so it was kind of unavoidable. So I did have to stop the data. Um, I'm actually going to clear the cache real quick. The cache, however you say that. Um, just so I can have extra space in my C-Star program. Um, it'll only just take one second, so allow that to finish. All right, that is now clear, so let's go back here. As you can see, it now says it has 50.6 gigabytes free. Uh, so let me go back to the stargazing. I'll do another go to on this one make sure i have it perfectly centered the way i want it should be about right there hit go to i'm um, just gonna allow that to finish and then after the go to we're gonna begin the shooting process one more time and allow it to run for as long as possible hopefully uh, we won't have any uh, trees or anything get in the way because obviously that would kind of mess everything up that we're trying to do however it does get in the way um, we're just going to work with as much data as possible so let's get started with the shooting process Let's go ahead and do restart. It will be, uh, begin the enhancing one more time while it's shooting. Um, once the enhancing is complete, it's going to start stacking the images, which you guys are going to watch in just a minute. So let's just allow that to enhance uh, and get started. Okay, so I guess this is kind of just the joys of stargazing, sort of the irritating part. As you saw, there was yet another tree branch in the way, and I think it's going to continue getting in the way due to the giant oak tree that i really wish i could cut down unfortunately it is a supposedly historic tree that cannot be cut down because it was planted a very very long time ago so i do have another one in mind that we could potentially go to uh see if it's covered by trees or not i'm really hoping it's not uh it's caldwell seven so let's go there um see if we can find it if we can't find it then our last um option i guess is gonna have to be um 
Caldwell 23, I believe it is, uh, which is also a nice galaxy. I just don't really appreciate that you can't really see as much banding in it, uh, but it kind of is what it is with that one. So let's go ahead and give that a try, and hopefully we can get some results with this one. Let's allow it to go to the object. Um, hopefully the fact that my sea star is facing south and not north is not going to cause an issue with this because this is a north um, a north faced object, I guess we can say. Um, and that could potentially cause an issue in regards to the amount of rotation that the sea star S50 can do. I don't think it can do a full 460 degree, you know, thing. But hopefully, hopefully the whole 180 degrees it can do. I haven't actually tested that and I haven't asked about that either. So I'm really going to have to see because it's sort of just a test and go process. So it's currently identifying uh, the fact that it's taking this long to identify kind of means that it's probably below the horizon or not below the horizon, but below other trees that I have here. So trees are great. You know, it's awesome for the atmosphere. It really helps everybody out because it gives you oxygen so you can breathe. But at the same time, it causes a lot of issues for us astronomers. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you people can understand um, when I say that trying to do astrophotography in an area that's full of trees that happens to be your house uh, can get quite discouraging and frustrating at times. So uh, it's currently identifying. Um, and if this does not identify correctly, then we're going to have to go to uh, Caldwell 23. Um, let me just press the stop button. Maybe maybe we can go to here and see if trees are in the way. Yes, trees are definitely in the way. So Caldwell 23 it is. Let's go ahead and go to that object to see. Uh, maybe we can check here. Galaxies. Uh, these ones are visible all night currently up in the west that one's north at its current peak altitude actually uh let's see what others do we have uh m32 andromeda no no fireworks galaxy but that's visible all night they say uh, but that is uh currently going down let's scroll through here it's honestly very handy that they have all of these things here um it gives us better options uh to find so let's continue to scroll through all of these I really wish we could have done the Squid Galaxy, but there's not really much I can do for that one. So I guess we can try this one. It was not Caldwell 23, I believe. That's the Needle Galaxy. So I'm pretty sure it's actually this one here. Uh, the Silver, 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 Silver something. I don't know what this is. It's visible at night. It's still heading upwards. So let's go here. Let's go to, go to gazing here. Uh, it should be able to center on this one properly. If it doesn't, um, then I'm pretty much giving up hope for this video. Uh, and that would be sad for everyone because I'm sure a lot of people were interested in how this one's going to finish out uh so let's try caldwell 23 oh it is caldwell 23 okay uh i was right about that um perfect so let's allow that to identify go to the object i'm pretty sure it shouldn't have any obstacles in the way as you can see it's identifying properly this is this is the typical sequence it goes to when it's actually identifying something correctly um so yeah let's let's allow it to do this hopefully on another night we can get the uh, other galaxies that I was really, really aiming for getting. Um, but as you can see, everything's perfectly focused now. No obstacles in the middle. So let's go ahead and start shooting this one and let it run as long as possible.
All right, it is now night two of our little galaxy test here. I do want to clarify before we go out throughout the rest of the video. Um, I can't really guarantee how many hours we're actually going to get on these two targets. Uh, and also, I just realized I kind of gave away a little, little spoiler here. Um, I did actually manage to catch the other galaxy last night that I was hoping to get since the beginning of the video. And you can see that right here. As you can see, uh, starting to come in nicely. We only have about 100 minutes of data, though. It's, it's not very much. Uh, but we're going to try to get as much as possible for about the next week uh, before the bad weather sets in again. Also, um, if you happen to hear my voice changing throughout the course of the video, uh, it's because every single time I start recording, you know, a day has gone by, but I'm slowly starting to get a head cold. So you might start to hear me get congested throughout the video. So I apologize for that. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, I can't really guarantee how many hours of exposure time we're going to get on these two targets uh, due to the fact that honestly is very much unpredictable and we have a lot of bad weather coming this way. Uh, but I would like to get this video out as soon as possible because uh, I do have a lot of people asking me about it. Um, obviously, we're going to try to get as much as possible, but uh, there's only so much you can do. And that's that's exactly why I'm starting, as you can see from my tablet. Um, it's only 7.51 p.m. Uh, October 17th. Yesterday was October 16th. And we are really trying to get as much detail as possible on these two galaxies. Now, first things first, obviously, we're going to go to our stargazing we're going to go to our Caldwell 23. But first, I would like to go to Cassiope, Cass Cass Cassiopeia. I'm not really sure how to say the name of the constellation. Uh, it's the one near Cassiopeia. Okay, Cassiopeia. We're going to go there uh, and autofocus on one of these stars to make sure our detail is nice and sharp. So let's go to there. Um, I can already see it, even though the sun's not completely down. Um, I can actually see the moon somewhat too starting to rise, unfortunately. Um... It's only a very, very thin uh, crescent moon at the moment. Each night is going to start coming up earlier, and that's also going to start affecting our data. So I'm really trying to avoid um, several different things. Obviously, the moonlight, uh, number two, weather. Number three, a horrible, congested voice. I'm trying to avoid all of those things, so we're trying to get this done um, as soon as possible and as much detail as possible. Obviously, I won't be able to tell you, you know, how much of a difference... Uh, sorry, obviously I won't be able to tell you how much detail we get out until we actually take it into serial and get to, uh, to stacking it on there and processing it on PC, but I'm sure we can get some good detail out of it based on the previous uh, video that I did. We were able to get a good amount of that. So it's now shooting. It's locating the star in Cassiopeia. Um, after that, we're going to autofocus. And I'm just going to show you guys the whole autofocusing thing. Um, as you can see, object is centered. That's what they said. There we go, perfect. So let's autofocus on that. It's a very easy system. You just press the autofocus button and it will start autofocusing by itself. Those who have never seen the C-Star S50 before, um, you don't really have to worry about manual focusing, although you can if you want. That's an extra option in the settings where you can turn on manual focusing and you can even say, uh, sorry, save the focus point that the C-Star is at as a default so that it will automatically open up to that focus point. Uh, but those who have already you know, I've seen a lot of C-Star, uh, the autofocusing thing is it's a very handy algorithm that makes a whole lot stuff, sorry, it makes a whole lot of stuff faster um, than it would be. Um, hopefully, uh, if you watch this video, you'll want to get a C-Star S50. It's honestly a great choice for a beginner and even those who are experienced in astrophotography, uh, it's a great option for everyone. Um, the Dwarf 2 was my first uh, digital telescope, C-Star is my second, and honestly, I have to say I love them both. But C-Star definitely really gets to detail in regards to these small objects that we're trying to shoot like we are tonight. So uh, let's go to objects. Wait, what was that? I just saw something strange. Okay, what's this? Seems like some dark nebula there. I might have to take a look at that eventually, see if it's possible with C-Star. Uh, but let's see. Okay, go to objects. We're going to go to this one, NGC 891. We're going to go to gazing. Obviously, I can't start the shooting process yet, but um, once... Once the sun goes down just a little bit more, we'll start the shooting and get to work. So I will see you guys in just a minute, just as soon as we are done doing the go-to. And as soon as we start shooting, uh, I'm going to let it run again throughout the entire night. Split it about halfway around 2 a.m. to start fo uh, photographing the other two galaxies as well. And then uh, move on to the next day.
All right, so it is now night three of our attempt to uh, get Galaxy data. Um, I'm definitely 100% sick now, I can promise you that. Woke up with a horrible sore throat this morning, so please uh, bear with my voice here. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to look at the moon, but it is behind some trees. It's only 7.16 p.m. that we're getting this started. I wanted to, again, get as early of a start as possible. Obviously, we can't see any stars right now. Um, even if we tried, it's still still light out. Um, but we're going to get as started as early as possible. Last night, I realized that I made a mistake on the second target. I did not autofocus before uh, starting to shoot that target. I realized I should have done that because as a result, as you can see here, my image ended up being kind of blurry, not as detailed as it should have been. But we're still going to try to work with that data later on in post-processing. Uh, but tonight, I need to make sure we actually get some good, clear data. So as soon as it turns about 8, 10 p.m., uh, maybe 8, 20, we're going to start working on getting that data for these two objects and um, then we'll just have to wait till the next night so let's go ahead and allow that to run All right, so uh, as a result of a weather change, I did, in fact, have to change my schedule a little bit. Um, I've already brought my data inside onto PC now. I only got about three nights worth of data um, on both of these targets uh, due to the fact that the weather has now changed to complete cloudy skies and rain for the next week um, and week and a half. Uh, so honestly, I didn't get to get as much data as I wanted to, but as you can see, I'm starting to run through the sequences to try to get everything stacked. Uh, so not have to worry about that later. Yeah, so we're just going to work with the data that we have uh, for right now at the moment. So I do already have stacked um, NGC 891, one of the night's worth of data. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in serial. Um, and then I actually have two of those. 
um, already in the result.fit files, I put them in here so I can stack the two result.fits. Uh, but we're just going to work with the first one for now just to see if there's any kind of difference uh, later on in regards to details that the Sea of Stars 50 is able to bring out um, in regards to galaxies, uh, depending on how much exposure time we get. So here's one night of data. The next one you see is going to be double that amount of data. So let's check this one out first, obviously. I'll put in an auto stretch and unlink the image. And here is our first galaxy, the NGC 891. As you can see, it's still a lot of detail here, uh, despite the fact that there really wasn't a lot of exposure time. Uh, also, we have, uh, we're able to see one, two, let's see how many galaxies can we actually see here uh, that I did not see in the original pictures. Is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I actually do see eight galaxies here. I'm sure there's even more in this picture that I don't see. Uh, so the fact that Z-Star is 50, of course, it hasn't even been stretched yet. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I am sick still. Uh, again, of course, the fact that we're able to see this much just with one night of data is quite impressive for the Z-Star, thanks to the moonless nights, of course, and the, the built-in light pollution filter that there is. So let's go to our image processing first. Obviously, we're going to uh, get rid of our background. Let's do our background extraction here. Kind of crop this out because we don't want, let's see, let me close that. We don't want to have that extra field rotation in our image. So let's just crop this out. This should be all right. Just go ahead and crop it. Let me make sure that my other program is running fine. You don't want it to not complete the stacking process. Obviously, we only have 72 gigabytes left of data. So uh, let's go back here to serial to the other one. Here it is. Okay. Uh, let's first do our background extraction. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just gonna speed through all of this, like I did on the nebula, uh, nebula, por sorry, nebula portion um, <clears throat> of the this type of video uh, that I did previously, uh, so that you can actually uh, do a f uh, better run through in regards to galaxy processing. We using the complete data. This is only half the data, um, as I explained just a little bit before. So. I was me just go ahead and speed through it and you guys can follow the next part. All right, so here is our first image. Obviously, I'm sure if you I'm sure you probably noticed um, I did have a weird slip up with the serial program, uh, but we worked through it eventually. I decided not to do the Starnet uh, processing um, because it does. Uh, it's a bit unnecessary since I'm just trying to show you a bit of an example of what it's going to look like. You know, just an idea. Here's the amount of detail we're able to get out of this galaxy um, already. Honestly, in my opinion, it's quite impressive. And perhaps if we were to run through this through perhaps like a sharpening software um, to really make the detail pop a bit more, um, it would be quite impressive. Perhaps if you have something like uh, Pixinsight or Photoshop that you could uh, really make the details like the smaller galaxies here uh, pop even more, you could get a whole lot more out of your images uh, than I am getting here. Uh, but the question is, what would it look like with double the data now? Uh, we can see that here. Uh, if we go to Cyril and go to my NGC 891 uh, images, set that as a home directory. And now here's the part where you can actually kind of follow along uh, if you would like to uh, do your own image processing in regards to galaxies. And it doesn't even have to be this one. It can be any kind of galaxy. Uh, so let's go ahead, sorry, uh, and check this out. Open result.fit. Open it up. And let's kind of start working through this now. Let's go to auto stretch and unlink it. Uh, obviously, you can see a lot more rotation here uh, due to the fact that this is multiple nights combined. So uh, first things first, obviously, I want to crop this out. Just crop it like this. Crop it. There we go. Much better. Let's do our background extraction. Here it is. Let's generate that. Obviously, we want to make sure we get these extra corners uh, included in that so it can sample all the data correctly and run the algorithm perfectly compute background apply as you can see we have no weird discoloration anymore so uh, let's do our remove green noise apply let's do our color calibration photometric now the nice thing about the c-star 2 is that it automatically has the coordinates in here uh, to make your job a little bit easier so let's just run that uh, very fast very easy to complete hit close and now we need to take this into uh, the Starnet program. So switch that to linear, save it. Always make sure you save your images after you're happy with your step. Uh, go to Star Processing, Starnet Star Removal, and pre-stretch it and hit Execute. If you do not pre-stretch your image, 
uh, it will not know exactly where the stars are and it will mess up your image completely. So make sure you have the pre-stretch on. Uh, obviously, I'm not happy with how it pre-stretched there. So let me switch it to, uh, sorry, no, leave it in linear. We're going to go to the generalized hyperbolic stretch, bump it up to 100. Let's go here, set that as our symmetry point, and I'll start bumping this up until we see the galaxy uh, enough. I'm wondering, okay, so there was a star here, um, unfortunately, that kind of caused a weird blotch. Uh, eventually that will go away once we do more of the post-processing because the star is going to recover that so it should be okay um, honestly uh, let's zoom out i will say the details of the oops the details of the galaxy are a bit more sharpened um, you can see a bit more detail on that even perhaps what could be a supernova here who knows that would be exciting if there was a supernova here in the galaxy uh, here here maybe here uh, that's the fun honestly about galaxy 2 um, you can actually go ahead and look at previous galaxy images and see the difference. Perhaps you'll discover a uh, brand new supernova. Maybe you'll see a star being born. It's a lot of exciting stuff in regards to galaxy uh, photography. Let me set this back to the original size. Uh, hit apply. Now, let me bring it up just a tiny bit more. Should be okay. Hit apply. Close. Honestly, I don't want to bring up the black point because I don't want to... Sorry about that. Uh, honestly, I don't want to bring up the black point because I don't want to cut out any of the extra data that we have here. Let me go ahead and center that. There we go. Uh, next thing, we do our histogram transformation. Bump this to one. Bring this up just a tiny bit. Not too much, obviously. We want to bring this down to have as much data in there as possible. Apply that, and then we're going to do our color saturation. Let's bump this up. Obviously, we don't want to oversaturate it. Hit apply here. See, color saturation again. Bump it up a little bit more. Obviously, keep the background factor up. I see the blue kind of showing up here a bit too much, so that's not cool. I'll hit apply there, save it. And now we bring the stars back in. Star processing, star recomposition. Let's go to our starless result, open. And bring our stars in here with the star mask result, open that. And let's bring as much stars in here as possible. Here we go. There we go. A uh, nice star-filled image. Just like that, you can see the extra galaxies here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Um, can't see them as much in this. Oh, they, never mind. Maybe it's just harder to see because I did crop out a whole bunch of them. Uh, eventually, in other processing, we could get rid of that ugly coloration there uh, if we were to want to. Actually, I could uh, show you guys how to do that as well. Let me close this. Uh, save as a unique file. Let's kind of move this out of the way. Open up GIMP here. Open that. We just close this. I do not want to update right now as, as I am doing a video. Okay, and let me minimize this a little bit, not too much. I just got to make it a bit smaller because I can't actually see my files here. All right, NGC 891, bring our picture in here. Now, what we're going to do here is pretty easy to just fix this coloration. Uh, we're going to zoom in just like that. Select by color. Just gonna select it here. Or uh, since it doesn't want to actually grab the correct coloration, we can just uh, freehand select. Just like that. That's a horrible circle. Enter. All right. Then I go to colors, saturation, and we are gonna lower this down. Obviously, the kind of. Uh, wasn't enough so what you can actually do with that is on the select you can grow and yeah, I'm just gonna grow it by one pixel I don't want to grow it by too much so just one pixel there we go now we go to colors saturation and let's kind of bring that down we don't want it to be as saturated of course it did get rid of some of the blue uh, which is good let me hit OK here select Grow that. I'm just going to go up by one more pixel. There we go. All right, let's do the colors again. Uh, reduce the saturation just a tiny bit more. There we go. Hit OK there. And now let's zoom out. All right, let's file. Let's see, save as. No. All right, see, sorry, file, export as uh, PNG. Let's save it into there. Replace that, actually. Export. Close it. Just discard 
sorry, discard changes, uh, and then open this up here. And as you can see, you no longer really see as much of the coloration. Obviously, it's still a little bit of an obvious blotch there, uh, but it's not as visible anymore. So let's look at the difference here uh, between the two two different galaxies. Open this up and boom, this over here. Um, as you can see in here, uh, there's a lot more chromation around the stars. Perhaps it's a due, due to the saturation that we did uh, before uh, getting rid of them. That, that could be the case. Uh, the galaxy, however, is a bit more dim. And, well, not really dim. It's more blurry. However, on this one, it has more of the fine details. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot sharper than we have on this image. Uh, the colors seem a bit more correct. Um, and honestly, it's a much better image than what we could get with this one. Although, perhaps you would prefer the one on the left due to the fact that the cars are... Sorry. Due to the fact that these stars are much more colorful. Uh, but personally, I'm very happy with this right image here. Uh, the sea star did an, an incredible job uh, with this galaxy itself. But I am curious about what we are going to get in regards to the other galaxy. So let's go ahead and open that up. Result.fit. Uh, let's put that in serial, obviously. Okay, so obviously we're going to do our auto stretch and see what we have here. Uh, let's see. Um, I will say, I feel like we ran into quite an issue. Um, perhaps in the stacking of uh, this data, it's possible that the data that I have ended up getting butchered somehow. So it's a little bit of a disappointment. Um, I did have a previous session... Uh, with NGC 1055, uh, hopefully I can find that. It should be here in my Google Photos. Let's go ahead and open that up. All right. Uh, because I'm not actually able to show you uh, the whole processing of it, which I'm quite disappointed about. I really wish I would have been able to do that. Here is uh, a different data. Honestly, the first night, because I did get curious. I wanted to see it. Um, here is the first night of data. As you can see, we have the two galaxies here. Another extra galaxy here. The amount of data that we got um, just in one night was enough to allow us to see very cleanly both of these galaxies. Of course, had we gotten extra data that was not, I guess, uh, damaged in a way, I'm sure we would have been able to see a whole lot more detail on regards to the bands here for the Squid Nebula. Uh, I can't recall what this nebula itself is called, uh, but we might have even been able to see some of the detail on this. Uh, sorry, I realized I was saying nebula. Uh, I meant to say galaxy. Uh, for each one, uh, we would have been able to see a lot more detail on this galaxy and this galaxy and this galaxy. Uh, but due to the fact that we, our data got somehow butchered, um, it did not work out quite the way we would have liked to. Um, but I am still quite impressed in regards to what Sea Star was able to do. Uh, perhaps it's just an issue that my computer is having. Uh, let's take another look at this one, uh, just as a little closing thought. Let's go ahead and open it up. Here is our NGC. Let's see, what was it? I forgot. All right, NGC 891 uh, Galaxy. I'm pretty sure it's also called the Needle Galaxy. I'm very impressed and happy with how much detail I was able to pull out uh, with Sea Stars 50. Um, honestly, I've had some issues in the past in regards to trying to process this galaxy. It's honestly been, honestly been a complete nightmare with other telescopes, uh, but I'm very happy with how much we were able to get uh, with such a short time in regards to Sea Stars 50. So. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I, again, apologize for uh, the issue with the data. Hopefully this, get being able to give you a little bit of a visual uh, in regards to what we could see here uh, was enough for everybody uh, to, to see what they think in regards to CS Stars 50. I thought this was a great image uh, by itself. Obviously, as you can see, this image was done. Let's see. This image was done uh, on October. This is in my way now. October 20th. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't that long ago. Uh, as you can see, it's only the 24th. So I didn't do that very long ago. It only just now uploaded, though. Uh, so let's open this again. As you can see, Seastar did a wonderful job. I'm very happy with how much it's able to do in galaxies. Uh, I would have loved to have been able to do more, but clouds and atmosphere and the moon is all back. Um, and honestly, I knew, do need to get a little bit of rest so I can get rid of this cold. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video despite the many issues that we had. Uh, hopefully we won't have as many issues um, in the future. Hopefully you were able to follow the processing tutorial in regards to NGC 
uh, you can use that on any kind of Galaxy that you have, uh, just as long as your data is nice and clean, uh, as it was for this one and not for the other one. So uh, please leave a like and subscribe. It does help the channel a lot. Um, I know that, again, there were issues, so I would understand if you didn't leave a like, you know, but uh, again, it, it, I do appreciate the support. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, I wish you all clear skies, and hopefully you guys can get your hands on a C-Star S50 soon. I know a lot of people are waiting for it, so... Uh, yeah, again, clear skies, everyone, and have a good night.